Welcome into the Future Sox podcast. My name is Elijah Evans, and I am joined today by White Sox recent draft pick, Ryan Galaney. Uh, he's here, you know, drafted a few months ago by the White Sox and kind of working through his first professional season, played, you know, 28 games in Kannapolis to finish out the year and is now at Instructs working through getting ready for the offseason. Welcome in, Ryan. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, we appreciate it. Um, so we'll start with this. How did uh how did the draft process go for you? You know, it's we have talked to a lot of different guys, and it's a it's a stressful process for everybody. I think it's it's hard to know kind of where you're going to land and how that's all going to go. So how was that? Um, you know, getting drafted by the White Sox, leading up to it, and all that stuff. Yeah, no, uh, definitely a stressful time for a lot of players. I was lucky enough to have some good contacts. My agent was able to talk to a lot of people throughout the process, the prior week and the days of the draft itself. So in the end, it wasn't a completely stressful thing for me on day three, um, being a day three pick as unlike many other people, but it was a good feeling as well. Like with the stress, it's all for a good reason. Being able to start your pro career and live your dream. It's awesome. I thought I had a chance to go on the second day. I had an offer from the White Sox then to go, but I felt like it wasn't for the right amount of money. And it ended up, working out on the third day to where they I kind of knew they were going to pick me a round or two prior um and I was kind of holding off for it a little bit so blessed to be within the White Sox organization and really thankful to the people that scouted me and the people that drafted me yeah that's great uh once you got drafted and you kind of got um initiated with the White Sox how was the the process of settling in and meeting the rest of the guys in the draft class and everything like that yeah so they sent us out to Canapolis for a, a little five-day mini camp a little draft camp with all the all the draft guys, all the UDFA guys. So it was awesome. Got to know them well. I already knew five guys played against two or three others throughout college and high school. I actually played high school summer ball with Luke Bell, an undrafted free agent. He's a great guy. So it was awesome to be able to know them and kind of have a base, unlike many other kids and many other people and organizations. You just kind of don't get that. And I feel like we're already really tight knit and it's a good group of guys. Going back even further, you know, you're talking about college summer ball a little bit. What was your experience like at Wofford? You know, we had a, you had a really good career there. You played there throughout college. Um, what was kind of the highlights of your college experience and things that you took away from that that have kind of built you into the player you are today? Uh, you know, I, I had to learn to fail. Um, it was a different experience for me compared to a lot of other guys being a, a mid-major kid. Um, I didn't play my first two years very much, and then I kind of jumped a little bit as, I guess, a draft prospect my junior and senior year. So I love I love the place. I love the coaches. JJ Edwards, the head guy there now, but he was the hitting guy when I was there. Um, Todd Ender Dodano, who's now at uh, Boston College, is a great guy, and I can't thank either of them enough. And Seth Cutler Volts and all the other coaches that are there right now. So uh, Coach Volts was he's now at Notre Dame, but he was one of the first guys to recruit me. So really thankful to all of them and to the school in general. Going back even further, kind of your childhood, was there anything, you know, throughout your life um, as a kid that really kind of pushed you in the direction of becoming a serious baseball player or anything that made you love the game the way you do today? I don't know if there's one specific thing. I think from the beginning, I just wanted to play baseball. Uh, I think on the back of my phone is a picture of me on my first team. Just kind of a reminder to be that little kid and be who we dream to be. So I think I was always called to wanting to play baseball and here I am now. Looking at your your game a little bit, diving into the baseball side of things, what are some kind of characteristics of of your play style um, that you think would be good for you know for fans to know and just to get an idea of who you are on the field? Uh, you know, I would say I'm not anything crazy. You know, I'm a I'm a right handed bat. I do hit the ball to the opposite field a lot, a lot more than I pull the ball, but that's just my approach personally. I'm a person that likes to hit. Uh, I can play a lot of positions I've been practicing in the corner infield in the corner outfield with the White Sox and really I just work hard play hard have fun I'm always gonna have a smile on my face and if I'm not it's because I'm in a situation that I'm really focused so yeah it's a lot of fun to be out there playing and I hope the fans can see that yeah, that's a great attitude to have. I was going to ask you a little about defense, you know, so I, I was looking at when you were at Wofford, you played third base mostly um, earlier at your time there, and then you kind of transitioned more to first base, if I'm remembering right. What is your, are you comfortable at any particular position more than others? And where do you kind of, you said you're kind of playing both infield and outfield corners. Where do you think the White Sox as of now are kind of looking at you more long-term? Um, You know, I'm not sure completely where they're looking at me now. I know there's really, they're looking at my bat 
from my understanding. And the more I hit and the more opportunities I have on defense, whether that is being able to play third base or first base or anywhere in the outfield, um, can only help me move up and find my way in the big leagues one day. Uh, at Wofford, in my past, I was a third baseman, and we recruited another third baseman after my junior year. And he, he's a phenomenal player. His name's Dixon Black. I have nothing but respect for him and love for him. And when he came, I, the best thing for our team was for me to play first base that year. And I I got accustomed to it pretty quickly, really well, I felt like. And I enjoy them both. First base is you're involved in everything, so it's really fun. Then the outfield's very free. You can kind of just go out there and run around like the field's your playground as some of the coaches within our organization. It's been awesome ever. Yeah, that's great. When you talk about the organization a little bit, what do you what do you think about, you know, being in Kannapolis kind of between last year's draft class for the White Sox has had a really big season in their first professional year. There was plenty of guys in that draft class who have really showed out. And then this draft class that you're part of so far has been really successful in the first few months. How do you feel just about the general core of all these young players now that you're kind of you've been around it for the last few months and just the, the future of the White Sox organization, especially at those lower minor league levels right now? Everybody I've met has been a good person. I haven't met anybody that. I don't want to be around, that I don't want to go and play with every day. I I think there's a good core moving up through the system. I don't know all the guys from the previous drafts, but the people I met in Kannapolis and the a lot of the guys that were in Arizona are all extremely talented, and they just continue to get better every day, and everybody's got a common goal in mind. You know, we we love baseball. We love being around each other, and we, we like to work hard. So it's a great atmosphere. That's awesome. Uh, off the field a little bit. Is there anything, you know, I, it sounds like you're very, you're very focused on baseball, of course, but off the field, is there anything you really enjoy doing or any hobbies that you have, uh, especially when you have some more downtime in the off season? Yeah. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I started picking up a couple new hobbies pr- right up to the leading up to the draft, knowing that I was going to have a lot more free time and then summer ball, of course. Uh, I started watching a lot of movies. I've been, I've been a big movie buff lately. Uh, I watch probably one a night right now, which is a little crazy, but one one every two days at least. But TV, movies, gotten into that. I, I like to read. Uh, I read the news. I try to read the news every day, so I have something else to talk about besides baseball. Yeah. But uh, really, the majority of my time is on the field, and then when I'm not there, I'm hanging out with the guys. Nice. Um, as you kind of look towards, you know, the off season, is there anything that you, what is your, what, first of all, what's your plan for the off season? Do you know, you know, where you're going to be at, where you're going to be, what kind of your, your focus of your training is going to be? So the first part of the off season after playing for since February, nonstop really, I didn't, I didn't really ever go home. Actually, I haven't been home since last January. Wow. I'm going to take a little bit of time to relax and see some friends and I'm still going to, lift and get my training in, do do stuff to strengthen my arm and stuff like that. But I'll probably take a little bit of time away from baseball itself. And then as November starts and as we're probably four months away from spring training, I'll probably start to ramp up a little bit. I know it's a long off season and I have a lot of time, but definitely some things I want to improve on and get to work with those. In terms of your your actual, you know, your hitting, your fielding, whatever it is, is there anything specific whether it's mechanically or just approach wise that you really want to hone in on this off season going into your first full year next year? Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is being able to play every defensive spot every day. So whether that's third base, first base, the outfield, I want to be ready. I know there's guys above me at first base, like Tim Elko is a stud. So I want to be able to prove myself in other positions. So I have the opportunity to play alongside him. And, I mean, our first baseman at the big league level is also very young and talented. So there's many things that are in the way there. So I want to be able to play the other positions just as good as I play first base. And then offensively, I want to be able to drive the ball to all parts of the field um, consistently and with true ball flight. So that's definitely uh, a big thing I'm working on. How much do you value – this will be kind of, we'll finish on this. How much do you value, you know, some advanced analytics and metrics? Cause it's, you know, you have a wide range in the modern game of baseball with people who some players who are more old school and don't necessarily look into that as much. And some people in teams who, who really value the the analytics behind their hitting and behind, you know, their, their ball data and their tracks and all that type of stuff. Um, what's your approach on that? I think it's a common mix or a, 
when you find a good mix, I think that's where you're going to be in a good standing with your swing and your approach. I don't want to dive too much into it, but I also don't want to stay away from it. I want to find things that can help me and stay away from the things that I feel like make me think too much. When it comes to scouting reports, I really like it because when we don't have the opportunity to watch video in the game, I have something I can rely on, whether it's the metrics of the pitches the guy throws or other things along that, whether he has a far reach down the mound so it gets on you a little bit quicker. So I enjoy having those by my side, but I don't necessarily want to only look at those. I want to have a little bit of feel for the game and play with my eyes. Yeah, it's a great approach, I think. Well, we are looking forward to watching uh, your continued development and the development of the entire 2023 draft class. Um, it seems very promising right now, and we appreciate you taking the time to come talk and uh, help some fans get to know you a little more. I appreciate it, and thank you for having me on.